look did you look back me? on where I became. But did you miss me though? Mm. For real, because we, I'm saying, miss, it seems like a thing. I miss it was his party birthday with party, Puff, man. man. I miss but party I'm talking about for your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I'm, I, yeah, we we party for my birthday before you came to my party. You know? No, but me and you ain't never really party. You know. What I saying? wonder how a lot of these people out here would feel if they knew that their favorite little gangster rappers were, let's just say, bent over by Diddy. It's been absolutely hilarious, but at the same time, scary going over all of these old clips of Diddy because you can tell just how uncomfortable everyone is when Diddy's in the room during an interview. You can kind of see it on their face. You can see it in their demeanor, their body language. You have people who are usually charismatic who get really you know, it seems like they go back in their shell when they're around Diddy. Almost as if he has this power over them. Almost as if they know, you know, it's like their confidence immediately gets sucked out of them when he's in the room because he probably took all of their confidence away when he had them doing strange things for change and an opportunity within the music business. But for those of you all who have not been keeping up, the allegations against Diddy are piling up. And now it's being, let's just say, allegedly Epstein, or I called him Epstein on accident. Allegedly, Diddy is like one of the Epsteins of the music, bin, uh, of the music business. And one of the lawsuits that came out you know, they talk about how powerful music executives would go to Diddy like he was the middleman. He was the person that would facilitate a lot of the drugs and young women and young boys that the older music executives would take part in. And now that all of this comes to light, Diddy's going to take the fall naturally while the people over him, the people more powerful than him, the people who kind of employed him to do this to begin with, they're going to, you know, walk away free. They don't have anything to worry about. But before we get into more of that, uh, more of that, let's just go ahead and roll this news clip. Let's see what they're talking about when it comes to this situation, because one of Diddy's former attorneys is speaking out. He's not happy about how this case is being handled. Some people are saying that the investigation is moving too quickly, and he's claiming that Diddy is totally innocent. So let's go ahead and roll this clip, and then I'll be right back with more thoughts. Former attorney for Sean Combs, Mark Garagos, and former FBI agent Stuart Kaplan. Uh, it's good to have you both, gentlemen. Uh, Stu, uh, you're sending subpoenas to his cell phone company, the people who gives him the jet, uh, some commercial airlines that he's been on. Uh, what is this about capturing? And why did it come after the raid, not before it? Well, so to your latter point is there was an investigative assessment clearly that realized that the issuance of these grand jury subpoenas would not be kept confidential. They were concerned about them being leaked and that the target of their investigation would then be able to utilize that information to perhaps delete or destroy or remove evidence. And so it was the proper call, especially when you have a high profile individual entertainer like this. And so that's why in the normal course, after a search warrant, now that the world knows that he's the target of a criminal investigation, it would make more sense. Mm. I accept Stu's explanation as plausible, but Mark, you know, I, I've been learning at your lap for decades, and usually the big raid is like the finale of when they're going in hot and heavy. Here, it didn't go that way. Do you think it's just um, subjective choice by this particular investigative team, or does it raise questions for you? No, it raises questions. I think. Clearly, um, your guest is right that 
they don't want to tip off that they're going in. And that's why normally I see it, often see it, that they'll issue the subpoenas right as they're executing the search warrant almost simultaneously, especially when you have this kind of a presence. The thing that uh, I've been highlighting about this is this seems awfully quick for a federal investigation. It's almost warp speed. Um, and I do want to comment, even though it was on your uh, your cry on down, down below. When you were talking about 50 Cent's ex, she came out today and she specifically denied that uh, that any of this was true. And I think that also goes to your other guest who was talking about, you know, you can bury these things in there and they just become kind of urban legend almost immediately. And so I think that uh, some of these claims already are demonstrably false. And I think that if the feds are using one or both of these lawsuits as kind of a roadmap, I think mm. that they're running those to ground and they're finding out quickly a lot of this stuff may may not be true. What's the chance, Stu, that the feds could get misled because of all this intrigue within the hip hop world and these civil suits that seem to be a trail of breadcrumbs, uh, but really uh, they're more about money than truth. Well, I know from my own experience, Chris, and to Mark's point, it's not unusual that there's a civil suit that comes to the attention of law enforcement. And just as Mark said, it may be used as a roadmap. But Mark would, I would imagine, uh, would agree with me that notwithstanding these complaints, meaning these civil lawsuits that uh, were published many, many months ago, in order to convince a sitting magistrate to issue a search warrant based upon in a fine who swears out that there is probable cause to believe that the fruits of some criminal enterprise or some crime may be found in someone's house, uh, you have to have credible, ripe information. That means that there's got to be some fresh information, usually the courts require within 30 days, that something new, something that has been corroborated. Right. It, it would be impossible that the magistrate, the judge who signed off on this search warrant, would have just had the information contained in a civil court complaint. There's something more that came to light. It's probably an informant or an, a victim. Right. And that is why you're seeing, as Mark said, warp speed with respect to them moving quickly on this. Well, I hope they do quick go quickly. I know the expression that, you know, justice delayed is justice denied, but also haste makes waste, right? Two things can be true at once. But I will tell you, and I say the same thing about the mayor of New York City, Adams. When you make a big show like this in public, you wreck people. You wreck their reputation. And I really do believe there should be something quickly in the form of confirming why this person's reputation was trashed the way it was. Because, too, as we both know, the media uh, wasn't a secret what they were doing at Diddy's Homes, right? They were well positioned for it, so somebody had told them. So let's see what happens next. And I can tell you, Garagos is not a huge fan of the standard you need to get a search warrant. But your I don't think this situation is necessarily ruining Diddy's reputation. Anyone who has been paying attention has been knowing about all of this stuff for years. That's why none of us are surprised at all. This is basically just confirmation of everything that we've been talking about for years. It's confirmation uh, um, of like everything that people within the music industry have been saying. I've shown you some of the clips. We've had <clears throat> dozens of people speaking out against Diddy for years. So I don't think this is necessarily really hurting his reputation. This is just, you know, a, a, another day for Diddy. Um, do I think he's going to come back from this? Will it hurt maybe some of his connections in the business world? Maybe, but then again, from what these lawsuits say, from what it looks like, a lot of the connections that Diddy had weren't necessarily business relationships. You know, when it comes to usual business, it was like illegal businesses. Like, hey, I can go out here and get you all young women and young men and this and that and all of that stuff. So I don't think his reputation is that hurt because most of the people more powerful than him in the music industry already knew about this and they were going to him. They were like his customers or 
better yet, his employer. You know what I mean? They were like his boss in this whole situation. So I don't think he's going to be really hurt when it comes to his reputation in the music industry at all. As far as how the media and the people who busted into his home, as far as how they cooperated, I agree there, though. There was definitely cooperation. The media was already set up. But for people who think that this investigation is going too quickly, I assure you that investigators, law enforcement, and the people who are behind this, they've been looking into this for years. Like I said, this isn't going to hurt Diddy's reputation because everyone's known about this for years. And best believe if we've known about it, if we sit here and joke and talk about this stuff for, for over a decade now, don't you think that they've been watching They've been building the case. They they knew they could have taken them down before this. It's just that now is the time. Did he either pissed off the wrong person, crossed the wrong person, or now he's served his purpose and it's time to get him out of there and usher someone new in. You know, Usher, no pun intended, even though it seems as if Usher may have been one of the first young lads that got groomed by Diddy. But yeah, as far as how this situation is unfolding, I've seen this happen so much when it comes to how like these rappers get taken down. The feds will listen to their lyrics and stuff, just silently building cases on people. You know, like like they'll sit there for years listening and just gathering tidbits of information. And then eventually, once you get, you know, you accumulate enough enough wealth and stuff, they go ahead and take you out of there. And that's what's happening here. And I don't think the feds would be coming in like this if they didn't know that they had enough to take him down. Because they know that Diddy's got a lot of money. So he can fight in court as long as he needs to. He can hire the best lawyers. So they know they have a solid case on him. I can guarantee you that. But for now, let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. If you want to donate to the channel, you could do so via Cash App or Super Thanks. Or for free, you could help the channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing the video. But with that being said, I'll talk to you all very soon in the next one.